So I'm Finn Levold from the Norwegian Geotechnical Institute, and I'm also uh, representing a global network of uh, tsunami researchers labeled the Global Tsunami Model. Uh, and uh, just want to acknowledge that there has been quite quite a number of co-authors on this uh, guidelines. And, uh, those are listed here. Um, so I'll just uh, briefly move on then to to talk a little bit about uh, the technicalities around tsunamis and their sources. Um, the tsunamis um, are mostly caused by earthquakes, and, and if you look at the, the figure at the right-hand side panel here, uh, you will maybe recall the same pattern as, as shown earlier today by Vitor Silva. Um, however, you see that the, the areas of, of these historical tsunami sources are, are much uh, more limited than earthquakes. They are basically uh, constrained around the major boundaries of, of the inter interplace boundaries called the subduction zone interfaces. Um, and, and the coloring of these events uh, shows the, the severity, um, the red colors, the most fatal, uh, and the yellow and, and the, the purple ones, the, the somewhat less fatal. Um, these uh, sources are mainly uh, or mostly destructive close to where they happen, but they are also clearly uh, uh, affecting uh, the, the far field and across borders, and they can propagate along large distances, which makes them fairly complex. Um, even more complex are the, the knowledge about other sources, um, as tsunamis may also be caused by landslides, volcanoes, and meteorological events. As we conduct more research, we see that often these uh, these events can also be uh, coupled with, with different processes occurring at the same time, such as landslides, triggered by earthquakes, etc. Um, so, so this is this is kind of the the, the background for for how tsunamis originate. Um, they are uh, tsunamis are not uh, very uh, frequent. They are quite a few events happening each year, maybe approximately five to 10 events globally. Uh, since the year 2000, the most important events are the Indian Ocean tsunami in 2004 and the Tohoku tsunami in 2011, um, where the Indian Ocean tsunami is caused by far the highest amount of fatalities. Uh, the Tohoku tsunami had a lar much larger uh, direct e economic loss, and as mentioned, also uh, the Fukushima event as a very important cascading cascading event. Then there have been also a, a number of other fatal events uh, happening, such as in, in Java, Mentawai, also in Indonesia, Solomon Islands, Samoa, and Chile. Uh, but in, in general, they are uh, fatal tsunami events does not happen very often, as you can see from, from this overview. So uh, to conclude, in infrequent tsunamis challenge our risk understanding because they are so rare. Um, actually, uh, a new event happening may, may change our understanding and, and uh, our measures of, of the tsunami hazard. Um, the upper right panel shows uh, some empirical laws um, derived for, for the recurrence for the uh, before and after the Tohoku event in 2011. And clearly it showed that, that this event alone did actually change the, the statistics uh, and our understanding of the frequency of, of tsunamis in, in this area quite uh, significantly. Um, and this shows that return periods and probabilities for tsunamis are, are poorly constrained and therefore also not very well understood. And this is a challenge. Um, as a, a second thing related to this is that standards are non-existing while these consequences and, and uncertainties are formidable. Um, this is uh, an example of how we, we monitor uh, and, and simulate the global tsunami hazard and, and its risk. Uh, these are uh, the maps made for the GAR-15 um, in, in, uh, in the global assessment report. Basically, uh, the upper panel shows uh, the the tsunami run-up heights for um, a 500-year return period with the red colors uh, showing run-up heights exceeding 10 meters. And we see again that these, these hazard maps clearly mimic the, the, the source uh, intensity shown in the historical map shown previously in, in these presentations. 
um, if we go to try to, to measure the consequences, such as the probable max, maximum economic losses, you see that uh, there are just a very f uh, quite limited amount of, of large countries that dominate these losses. We see this in the lower panel here, uh, indicated by, by green colors and some, some red and, and yellow colors. Which is not so uh, apparent from, from these maps is also that the small island states dominate economic losses relative to their country total because of their low heights means that they can be inundated quite severely and a large proportion of, of the, the built up environment can, can actually be uh, impacted by, by tsunamis of this, this uh, recurrence magnitude. Um, so, however, we cannot use these global maps to, to do local risk and local hazard analysis. We need to, to use other methods to, to be able to address the, the, the local hazard. So, so we use basically the re regional hazard screening studies to, to uh, make priorities for where to, to look for the, the local hazard typically. You see in the lower left panel a, a regional hazard study for the Mediterranean region. Um, you may use that to, to design sources. Uh, this is a probabilistic analysis, so we can then uh, invert these, these probabilistic analysis to, to design relevant sources for a site or a number of sites that are, are uh, subject to, to high run-up. Um, then we need basically uh, very detailed local topography, uh, census data, etc., to, to really be able to, to um, to make these local hazard maps as has been shown by Martina uh, previously. And, and we also uh, can overlay this by, by fragility functions or, or casualty or mortality risk maps to, to basically address the, the, the risk in, in a local region. And this will be uh, the accuracy of this uh, local study is, is highly dependent on, on uh, detailed local data. Um, this is an example of that. Uh, it's from, from again, from, from the Geoscience Australia in collaboration uh, with uh, the Indonesian government, uh, where they had done a, a national uh, scale probabilistic hazard study. Uh, and this hazard study is, is used to prioritize regions in, in the national master plans for reducing the tsunami risk, then constructing a number of local inundation maps and, and these inundation maps are again used to design risk mitigation and evacuation planning maps for, for cities that are highly exposed to tsunamis. So uh, back to my final slide, just to, to go to the global picture again, um, mentioned the global tsunami model. Uh, it's basically a global network of tsunami scientists that that are, are gathered basically to collectively uh, improve our understanding of the global tsunami hazard and risk um, because basically because of the large uncertainty that are, that are imposed by tsunamis and, and our, our lack of knowledge related to this, this very large uncertainty. It's an open initiative, so it's something we hold open for, for the, the, the tsunami community. It's, uh, it's basically to, our, our main aim is to provide reference maps and, and improve and, and develop standards and guidelines and to contribute to uh, the priority one of the SSDRR. Uh, okay, this is my, my last slide. Thank you.